Hello everyone, it's Caitlin and today we are making dress linens for both of my 1840s dresses. Okay, so let's start with what we're working with, which are the dresses. So this is 1840s dress number one um, that I made not too long ago, maybe December. Um, I wore it when we were at the um, landmark in for our uh, the Texas Living History Association's conference. It's an 1840s site, and so made an 1840s dress to go hang out. Um, it's not great. I need to do a few things to fix it. Um, number one being, I didn't realize because I'd never seen an 1840s dress in person, and it's really hard for me to see details on photographs. But um, turns out the gauging shouldn't stay at the waist. It needs to actually go down. I actually had the opportunity um, during the conference, um, our president, um, Hal Simon, actually brought an original 1840s dress and um, we got to display it, which is so much fun and really cool because, yeah. Um, and that really helped me with a lot of things with the second dress that I finished a couple weeks ago. So yeah, um, I do need to fix that at some point, which is just going to be undoing the gating, which is why I haven't fixed it yet because I hate gauging. Not as much as I hate buttonholes, but I do hate gauging. And I'm going to have to take all of it out <laughs> um, so, I can un so I can fold the, in the waist in and then stitch it back on. But yeah, that is essentially it. It you know, has pretty gathering. It closes up the back with hooks and eyes. I think I used hook and eye tape for this one. I did. Um, but yeah, that is dress number one. And then dress number two, I just finished, is this fun, fun fabric, and I actually did this one right, right on the waist, because I knew better at this point in time, because I looked at an original, which really helps. And this one I did pleat instead of gauge, because again, gauging's a lot of work, um, but I did it down to the waist like I should have, super helpful, it worked. And then this one has a little sleeve um, bits here. And I used the same sleeve pattern, but this, but this one ended up being so much tighter, and um, than the than the other one ended up. And I don't know how that worked, but whatever, um, it works. It's an 1840 sleeve, and 1840 sleeves like tended to be tight. Um, and there's that on the back. There was all my pleating. Um, each of my skirts has um, slits in the skirt because I have my pockets in petticoats. But what we need to do today is um, collars, cuffs, and handkerchiefs. Um, that's kind of how I do things. Every uh, one of my dresses has its own collar, own cuffs, or undersleeves, um, whichever. And it has its own handkerchief that keeps, stays in the pocket because I am terrible at remembering change, to change things out. So everything just has its own assigned pieces and I wash them when they get dirty and they go back on the same dress. It makes life so much easier <laughs> for me and I'm not, I'm never like wandering around at nine o'clock before an event, nine o'clock at night before an event trying to put my hand into every single pocket that I own to find a handkerchief. I just know it's, it's in there, which is super helpful. So what I do have so far, the only accessory I made for the green dress um, was a chemisette. That is, of course, completely hands on because this is the 1840s. And that's what we do. And it's just very plain. And then it has little um, bone buttons. And it ties in the buttons. So, and then I flat filled all the seams by hand. And that's kind of my, that's what I used for the green dress when I wore it back in January. I did not make cuffs. Um, and so I do need to make some sort of cuff. When looking at a, a photograph, I'm not seeing cuffs on every dress. I'm seeing cuffs on most dresses. But there are still photographs being taken where I'm not seeing any type of cuff on a gown. Which tells me it's at least somewhat um, personal preference. But I am going to make a set of very plain cuffs that go with this chemisette for the green dress. And I think I'm going to make, because I saw, I think it was a photograph. I'll have to go back and look. Um, but she had 
a collar. It was kind of plain, but it had a frill on the ends. And I think I'm going to do that for the second shimmy set and then make, a cu make cuffs to match. And I might look at some original handkerchiefs and see if I can find a handkerchief with a frill like that. That way I can have like complete sets like I like and um, be able to change that out. And then we're also going to make some work cuffs. Not that I'm ever in a kitchen, but just in case, it might be useful at some point. Um, the Work Woman's Guide has directions. I think they're, I think they're polished cotton, but they're very long. And it's basically just to um, protect the sleeve whenever you're cooking um, from oils and drips and that sort of thing. So we might make a set of those. Just have them in case I use them, in case I need them. I don't have to worry about it. And then we can call 1840s accessories a day. Okay, so let's cut a handkerchief. So I got some wall um, to match the uh, collar and shimmy set that I have. And I'm looking at an original from the 1840s, and it looks like it's 18 inches wide. And so let's cut it. That's perfect, actually. I just have a little, little bit of wall left, and that's 19 inches. So it'll give me plenty of seam allowance. square here and I'm going to iron the flat and iron a very narrow hem. We can do a narrow hem in a moment. But since I have that cut out, let's see if I can cut some cuffs out of these, out of what's left here. Okay, let's measure first how wide they need to be for this particular dress. Uh, ten and three quarters. How wide do I want them? Maybe two and I need a seam allowance as well. Okay. Let's see, one cuff. Okay. okay, that worked out pretty well. And this is all the scrap I got left of wall, so worked out really well. I think I'm gonna go ahead and make um, binding for it. I have a bias already um, I can use for the cuff binding. You don't find that. I have no idea why I ended up with so much of it. I don't even remember what project this is from, but I have like tons and tons of bias for plain white cotton, and that makes no sense, because what would I use that for? But it's been in the stash for years, so goodness knows what I was thinking back then. I'm going to go ahead and iron this. be the easiest thing to do next. So we're going to do something called a narrow hem, basically for collars and cuffs. Basically I have it folded over like a little over an eighth of an inch, maybe more like a quarter. And I take a little bite underneath it and a little bite on top. And then really close together, kind of the same thing. And I can do a couple of those. It's a really nice, very narrow hem. So this is what I usually do for fiddly little work like this. Okay, so I want to iron them. So handkerchief is actually completely done, which is awesome. Cuffs, all we have to do is put on the um, the, the binding.
right, cuffs done, so we can go ahead and sew them into the sleeve. Okay, if I remember correctly, looking at the original, the cuffs met kind of on the inside of the arm. So, let's do this, okay. That looks pretty nice. I'll stitch this in. Alright, so set number one is done. So we have a shimmy set that was already done, handkerchief, and two cuffs. So I guess now we can move on to the roughly fancy one for the chevron dress. Okay, let's work on the ruffled ones. So I'm using cotton lawn for this. And I think for the ruffled handkerchief, we're going to do um, a 12 and a half inch square and then do a, really I'm going to cut it three and a half inches, but it'll end up being a finished three inches ruffle, which will make the finished handkerchief like 18 inches, which is what I want. Looking at the original, I have that um, ruffled. It looks like proportionately it's one third ruffle and two thirds center. And that was the math I worked out. So we shall see. Go ahead and even this up. Let's cut the ruffles. The ruffle needs to be cut at three and a half inches and I need it 56 inches long I think and so yeah I'm going to iron this and then we can start I guess I think we're going to start by hemming the ruffle will be the easiest thing to start with I'm going to do the same narrow hem I've done, I did of the uh, last piece um, because looking at originals that's how ruffles were done they were narrow hemmed and I'm probably going to run a, a gathering stitch, uh, like right there, um, around the whole thing. So the ruffle is all sewn for the handkerchief. So let's go ahead and attach this. I think it might be easier to mark the quarters on this and then mark the halfway point maybe on each side of the handkerchief. That way we can get sure and even ruffle all around. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and stitch it up. Just running stitch all the way around. And probably fold this under and create a nice neat edge, but I think I'll come back before that. Alright, ruffle is on the handkerchief, so we can go ahead and finish the edges inside. I'm going to take this and fold it over, and then fold it over one more time. Get a nice clean edge, and I'll just stitch it right in the middle there. Alright, handkerchief is finished. So it's just a little square with a ruffle. That's all it is. So I guess we can start working on the next bit, let's go ahead and cut our cuffs. I've already measured the um, wrist on the chevron dress and it is nine and three quarters. And so I'm probably going to cut this around 10 inches. I'm going to go ahead and cut the ruffle. I think I'm going to cut the ruffle an inch wide. So it'll be finished around three quarters of an inch. And if these are 10 inches, 15 inches per ruffle. Okay, there's my cuff ruffle. I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with the handkerchief, which is just narrow hem it, and then run a gathering stitch. Alrighty, so I have two little cuff ruffles, so let's go ahead and attach this to the actual cuffs. Let's put my pins for that.
I think I'm just going to use the excess thread to stitch right where the um, gathering thread was. And we'll have a little ruffle cuff. But I think that was the appropriate amount of ruffle when I'm looking on the original. They didn't do like super, super roughly bits in this time period. It doesn't seem like it. looks like they are more lightly ruffled. Alright, cuffs are essentially done. So the ruffle got put on and then I turned over the underside so that it's all nice and neat and there are no raw edges and then hemmed the sides. So we just need to put on the um, bias like we did last time. Finished cuffs. So I suppose we can go ahead and put this into the dress now. So both cups are done and in. And we have our handkerchief done, so now all we have to do is work on the chemisette. Alright, time to work on the chemisette. For the collar ruffle, I'm going to need roughly 45 inches of a ruffle. So I cut that a little less than an inch and a half. It was like an inch and a quarter, wasn't it? Alright, I'm going to iron that and um, sew the pieces together so that I can do a quick narrow hem like we've done before. Alright, let's go ahead and sew these shimmies up pieces together. And then I'm just going to sew that with a flat belt seam. Alright. Shimmies that sewn together, and I folded under the center front, so I went ahead and finished the neckline. So we're at the point where we can go ahead and finish these edges. to add the collar to the chemisette. Alright, I can get to whip that on. And we have a chemisette. Essentially, I need to add ties here, I suppose. Okay, so collar is on. I am not going to add um, a center front closure because I'm looking at originals again. I'm not seeing very many. I'm just assuming they're probably pinned closed. Um, the collar will go over the dress, but the rest of it stays underneath the dress. So I'm assuming that's also going to keep it in place a good, um, pretty easily. And so, yay, no buttonholes. That's helpful. Um, and then we'll just put on ties and we'll be done. So I'm pretty happy with it. Um, except for, of course, the fact that I actually didn't. I shouldn't have um, bound the sides as well. It should have only just been the front and the back that were bound, but it's not terrible. I don't think it'll still work. That is done. So the next and last item we're going to make today are some tidy cuffs, which are essentially cuffs that you can wear over your gown um, if you're doing dirty work like gardening or in the kitchen or anything that you really need to um, protect your clothes from staining. Um, and so there are directions on page 75 of my copy of the Works Woman's Guide for some tidy cuffs. And it says, tidy cuffs are much worn by persons whose employments are apt to injure the sleeves of the gown, 
either by wearing it out, steaming, or greasing it. These are very, are very valuable while drawing, writing, pasting, or when in the kitchen, and in these cases are generally made of holland or nankeen, and when braided with dark blue, green, crimson, brown, or any other suitable color to, with ribbons to lace up of the same, they have a particularly neat effect. The cuff is cut out as follows on figure 21. Procure a piece of holland four nails down the selvage and five nails wide, double it, it in half its width, and slope down to the selvage from A to D, and from B to C, cutting off half a nail in a direct slope so that when open the end C D is but four nails wide while A B is five. Turn down a deep hem along each of the slope sides half a nail deep, and over the stitches put a braid with two other rows of the same color together on close together on the hem, leaving sufficient space between to insert a thin whalebone to support the cuff and to keep it from wrinkling when on the arm. The lace holes are worked with silk of the same color as the ribbon. Figure 20 represents the cuff when laced up. So let's take a look at this. It's plate 10, 20, and 21. So here it is um, unraveled and it shows you where to put the braid and then lacing holes. And so, yes, I think this will be quite simple. I think we might do two. It says when braided, so it doesn't have to be braided. So I might wait make one version braided and then one version plain. Let's go ahead and see what I got to work on this. Okay, so I have three colors of polished cotton I can use. And it's red. I kind of like it against the blue. So braid the blue one and then do a blue one and a brown one, I think. I'm sure I have some red silk ribbon to lace this up. I just have to find it. There we go. Here's some black ribbon. Okay, so I need a square, or a rectangle rather, four nails by five nails. Four nails is nine inches, five nails, nails is eleven and a half inches. And we're going to take off half a nail, which is just one and an eighth inch. step is to um, hem the slanted slide sides and so it says to turn them under half a nail so what I think I might do is just do an eighth of an inch and then an inch that way I don't have any raw edges okay so I iron side stitched them up and then I on the brown ones iron down a hem which looks maybe approximate to the picture again no dimensions makes this a little bit difficult but I'll work with it and um, I'm going to go ahead and stitch this up and probably make a boning channel. And I'm just trying to decide. I don't know how long I'm going to, how far I'm going to take this down. Okay. What I might do is actually use these on the braided version since they're thinner and that'll give me more space for the braid. But I might go ahead and do um, the full quarter inch for the non-braided pair. So. So this one, I think the next step is just sewing across here and then making channels. We'll put the brownie in together in a moment. This one, we're going to go ahead and I think pin the braid on. So it says to use it to cover the stitch marks. I decided to braid these so they look really nice. Go ahead and put in the boning. I think the next step is go ahead and finish this top edge. I think the next step is going to go ahead I think the next step is going to be go ahead and finish these top edges. Alrighty, I think we got that done. So the cuff is basically done. All I gotta do is, is the eyelets. And so I 
kind of tested to see how I liked it. Um, turns out one, every one and a half inches gives me five on each side, which is what the engraving is showing, so that's what we're going to go with. I got my awl here, or one of them. So I'm going to go in the center. Hook it all the way through, give it a good tug. That looks pretty good. I'm going to use some red thread to do this because the directions did say to do the, to work the eyelets in the color of the braid. Let me check that real quick just to make sure. Yes, the lace holes are working but still the same color as the ribbon. So we're good. And there's the single eyelet. It actually looks really good. <laughs> you one of the best eyelets I've done. Let's work on this one. Alrighty, got the blue ones all done with their eyelets and everything. Took a little bit, but it's done. Um, really, really like how they look with the red and the blue. I'm surprised I liked it that much. I wasn't really sure about it, but I'm really glad I did that. So, um, we're going to start on the eyelets for the brown ones. Alrighty, so we got two pairs of cuffs. So we can go ahead and lace them up. So it looks like it starts at the wrist and works its way up from the original. I'm gonna get my bodkin. Alright, got one cuff laced. I'm guessing that's enough. I guess if I can get it over my hand, we're good. Yeah, okay. It doesn't really cover everything. I guess you really don't need it to since um, you really only need it to cover whatever's going to get splashed by grease or get dirty. Cuffs are done, so I guess that means all of our accessories are finished. I am going to attempt to put on one of these dresses um, and put the other one on the mannequin, but I don't know how that's going to work because I live alone and these dresses close at the back. So we'll see in a minute if I can actually manage this. Okay, so I actually managed it. Um, not entirely sure I'm going to manage to get out of it. But I did get into it. Um, there's a couple hooks in the back that aren't actually done, but it's close. I'm actually very impressed with myself. <laughs> I really didn't think I could do it. Particularly with like the drops arms eye and, you know, stays that have shoulder straps. I really did not think I was going to be able to get into this. But I did. And I kind of still have not over the fact that I, am, that I managed to do this. So, yeah. It's interesting. Oh, look, the collar looks nice, and they're my cuffs. And I dressed out Edith as well, so she has her um, chemisette, which was already done, and then she has her handkerchief down here. I don't think y'all can see it, but it's there. I don't know where the handkerchief for this dress went to, but it's probably on the floor somewhere. And then there are cuffs, but I also put the, some of the work cuffs on her right now. So, yeah. I managed to get dressed in this all by myself. I'm still not quite over that. That 
Yeah. It's interesting. We did the other work cuffs. My only concern about these work cuffs is I have no idea how I'm gonna like tie them because I'm I can't reach them with the hand with this hand. And I don't think I can tie them one-handed. This may need to be something that I need assistance with. Which I don't have right now. Oh, and I lost the lace. Okay. Yeah, they do work, and like it does fit very nicely on the wrist. I might prefer like if it acts to close all the way, but it works pretty well, and I think it's going to do what it's supposed to do, which is just to shield the dress. So I guess that's kind of the point. But yeah, so I guess I actually have a functioning 1840s wardrobe now, which is helpful. Um, that is two dresses um, and two sets of linens. And some work cuffs, which I don't think I'll actually, which I may not actually ever use because I don't tend to actually do hard labor or work. But I figured, you know, while we we're doing the rest of them, might as well go ahead and make these up. So yeah, thanks so much for joining me in our little 1840s adventure, and I'll see you next video.